and welcome to game number two, the one we have been waiting for here in Tigerville as the number one seed of North Greenville University Crusaders getting ready to host the number four seed, the Columbus State Cougars out of Columbus, Georgia. Cole, this has been a long time coming here at North Greenville. This has been the year 44-8, and eight, regular season and conference tournament champions. North Greenville first time as a number one seed here in the NCAA Baseball Division II tournament. Second time they've get, they've made a regional. Yeah, what a, what a great day this is, and what a uh, just a cool opportunity this is to be able to not only host a regional, but play the first game here at a, a 3 o'clock start. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a fun one because this is a very good Columbus State team, 41-12, and 20-9 in their conference, and then a very good North Greenville team, 44-8. 21 and 3 in the Conference Carolinas. They have rolled through the Conference Carolinas, rolled through the Conference Carolinas tournament, Grace. So uh, these are two good teams, 40 uh, win teams, close to 85 wins between the two of them. So two very good baseball teams, two very good pitchers. And I think we're going to see a great pitching matchup today and a lot of good bats as well. This is an awesome uh, opportunity for North Greenville not, to not only be hosting, but to, to get this thing started and let's play and see if we can get a win. Head coach Landon Powell starting off with a great arm, the right-hander. Tucker Burgess will be on the mound here for North Greenville. A 2.84 ERA, 14 wins. That leads the Conference Carolinas. Only two losses. This will be his 18th game started. He's gone two complete games through 88 and two-thirds. He's given up 92 hits, 32 runs, 28 of those earned. He's walked 14, struck out 81 opponents batting 261 against him. And leading off the inning here for Columbus State, the shortstop Grant Berry, the DH Chase Brown, and the third baseman Mason McClellan. Here we go, Gray. And the first pitch from Burgess is popped up third base side and foul. Nobody you'd rather have on the mound right now uh, to open this thing up and hopefully get a win in day two than Tucker Burgess, somebody who's seen a lot of college baseball coming into this game as a junior with a 2.84 ERA, 17 appearances, a 14 and 2 win loss record. All 17 of those appearances uh, he did start, 88.2 innings pitched, giving up 92 hits, just 32 runs, walked 14, and uh, struck out 81 this season. Has Tucker Burgess great? Look at that strikeout to walk ratio. Anytime somebody pitches as many innings, 88 innings, and only 14 base on balls, that's pretty big. And here's how North Greenville lines up defensively. John Jones will be catching for Burgess. Ryan Brown at third. And over at first is Andrew Plunkett at second. Jared Williams, shortstop Utah Jones. As a slow chopper again, foul. In the outfield, Jeffrey Chandler back in the lineup. He'll be in left. Jack Morrison center. And Connor Grant over in right. You mentioned a lot of good names, but how about – what a, what a great year it's been to have John Jones on the roster for, for North Greenville Crusaders, obviously a senior now, um, as he's seen a lot of college baseball, and here's a base hit. Up the middle goes the shortstop, Grant Berry, to lead it off with a single for Columbus State. And Berry, last night against UNC Pembroke, uh, did not pick up a hit. He drew a walk in the sixth inning and came around to score, but other than that, two strikeouts and two flyouts. You can kind of tell, Gray, Columbus State has a lot of electricity in their dugout. This has got the making to be a really good game, and Chase Brown, the junior, coming up to the plate now, hitting 373 on the season for Columbus State, 102 at-bats, 38 hits, four home runs, and 19 RBIs. He's been struck out only 20 times this season. He don't strike out much. He takes ball one from Burgess. Brown homered in the game against UNC Pem Pembroke in the first inning. And a foul tip there puts him level with Burgess. One ball, one strike. Rest of the batting lineup you have for Columbus State. McClellan's on deck. Austin Farr bats fourth. Robert Brooks bats fifth. Frank Wager, Wager bats sixth. Gunnar Drennan bats seventh. And batting eighth, Garrett Kirkwood. Batting ninth, Drew Webb. Pretty similar to the lineup we saw last night. Don't seem like many changes, was it? It might be, it might be well, wrong. I went Barry, Brown, McClellan, Farr, Brooks, Wager, Drennan, Kirkwood, and Webb. Yep, same exact lineup. Obviously a, a different pitcher. Knowles on the mound tonight uh, for Columbus State, but 
Pretty similar lineup. One two count here to Brown. And Bird just misses up high, ball two. And Bird just misses downstairs, full count. The batter's doing a good job, Gray, of making Bird just work for it so far. Running around first for Columbus State. And a payoff to Brown. No, he'll throw it back to first. Boy, plunk it. Woo. It's tangled up there with Barry. How about that? Head coach for Columbus State, Gray, Greg Appleton. We talked about Landon Powell and the job he's done for North Greenville, but also a, a big win last night. Payoff pitch is dribbled over the head of Burgess right to Jones. Throw to first. Is in time to get the runner. And Barry moving over to second, one away. That was trouble. Utah Jones did a really good job of being patient, not trying to go to second. Because a lot of times in that situation, you'll want to try to force it to second. He would have been too late. He goes to first with it. Doesn't get the lead runner, but he does get the out. And here is a third baseman, Mason McClellan, for Columbus State. Senior for the Cougars. McClellan walked and singled for his times on base last night against UNC Pembroke. Comes into today's game hitting 310, 216 at bat, 67 hits, nine of those doubles, nine home runs on the season, and 59 RBIs. And taking his time getting in the box, now he'll stand in and swing and miss for strike one. Big pitch from Burgess. Now Burgess, very good on the fastballs. Has a few off-speed selections. Doesn't really like to use them much, but he's got a lot of heat. We wait on the 0-1. Burgess will check second. <laughs> Strike two. Froze him down the middle. Tell you what, those are two good pitches, Gray, and no swing. Um, for McClellan, I tell you what, I kind of surprised when the senior didn't take a look at that one. Now I want to shine a spotlight on a, a member of the coaching staff for North Greenville. What more can you say about pitching coach uh, John Kutlangus and the job he has done alongside Powell? Well, you, you, if you know what Kutlangus's past is and uh, the connection as this one's hit right up the middle. Yeah, that, that one passed Jones. Columbus State sending the runner home. Here comes Morris on the throw. Burgess cuts it off. And Columbus State strikes first. Scoring a run. Going back to Coot Langus, if you know the connection between him and Landon Powell that started at the University of South Carolina, you know that Coot Langus has had a lot of experience uh, as a player, uh, really so successful uh, as a player. And to have him in Tigerville, that's big. I mean, him and, and Landon Powell are really just a perfect fit uh, for each other. So uh, this is a big, big game. And, and Columbus State already striking first. Let's see if we can get two more outs. Yeah, they got a pair of singles that have managed to be just outside of the reach of Utah Jones at short. And the curveball uh, does not curve. Curves the wrong way. Didn't yeah, it? curved away from Austin <laughs> Farr, who's in there now, the left fielder for Columbus State. Junior, Gray, right? yesterday. Uh, got a double, a home run, and a walk. Coming into this game, he's batting 355, 183 at bats. Oh, he won for the fences there. 47 runs, 65 hits, 13 doubles, 15 home runs, and 51 RBIs. He is tied with Frank Wager on home runs. Remember last night? We talked about that. Tied that thing up last night. Did far. 1-1 one, one count to him here from Burgess. Trying to get out of the inning. And a chopper, well covered by Jared Williams. He'll fire it to Burgess on the slide. Oh, man. And they didn't get him. How about that? That was just good base running and a perfectly placed hit. That's trouble because at that point, you're really in a bind when, when uh, Jared Williams is having to come over and field that one. It's almost going down the first baseline to the outfield. And then you have Tucker, Tucker Burgess trying to come over and cover first. By the time they both got on the same page and made the throw, the runner was in. So 
How about the Cougars? Threatening, already got one run, uh, two runners on now, first and second covered. Yeah, Burgess got that first out pretty quick there from Brown after the single from Barry, but then back-to-back -back singles. And we're already down to the fifth spot in the lineup. Robert Brooks, the catcher, now stands in. Brooks, pair of flyouts, hit by a pitch, and then hit by a pitch twice. And ball one. No reason for Burgess to, to get out of his groove. I mean, you got to stay with what has worked all season, and you'll probably see him slow down a little bit right here just to calm himself down and see if we can get out of this inning. Check swing. Did he go? No, he didn't. Ball two. It's close. Well, Burgess has had a – has had some rough starts, especially in the first inning in some games, but he's picked it up as we as you start working your way through the second, third, and fourth. I mean, you don't get 14 wins not doing that. That's right. A wide batting stance there for Brooks, a catcher. And home run swing misses. Strike one. It's a big strike for Burgess just to – relocate what was working for him in that fastball. North Greenville tried to turn two earlier, could not do it because of the placement of the ball, and then couldn't even get that out at first base in the last at bat because of the placement of the ball hit. So two good hits by Columbus State. Three total this inning. And Burgess spins off the mound. Checking Barry or checking McClellan back at second. We did have two box called. Both of them were in the <laughs> late game against UNC Pembroke, if, if you want to call them box. Burgess to the plate. Chopper foul. And I know Gray last night talking about those two box. You and I couldn't really tell because he wasn't pitching from the windup, but I did find out today that his left foot, his front foot, he was really stutter stepping before the pitch, and that's what caused the the umpire to call the balk. He didn't have that left foot set. It had nothing to do with him stopping because he was pitching from the stretch, but that's what I was told. The balk were, uh, the, the second, two balks were. The second movement of the foot there. Yep. Here's a 2-2 two -two and lined into left field. Base hit. Here comes Columbus State around third with McClellan. The throw's cut off. And Columbus State teeing off on Burgess. That's 2 nothing. Columbus State I mean, for whatever reason, they are seeing Burgess's pitch so well. Four hits in the first inning, and that's just not what you expected to see uh, out of Tucker Burgess, who's been so dominant all year long. Whew. How about that? They're on fire. And here is Frank Wager, the first baseman. Now let's see. Last night, his performance... Only time on base was a walk in the eighth. Well, let's see if Wager can keep the uh, keep the hits coming. Uh, four singles, oh, four hits for Columbus State. The only out was a ground out to Utah Jones at short. That was the D.H. Brown. Burgess fires again, fouled away. Coming into this game, hitting 269, 208 at bats, 47 times. Wager has scored from 56 hits, nine doubles, 12, excuse me, 15 home runs. Him and Farr are tied and 46 RBIs. He's tied for third on the team in RBI category. Burgess fires again over the top of it, strike two. Burgess going to check down here on strike on a 1-2. Fire to the plate. Off the end of the bat. Goodness. Into left field. They're going to hold the runner this lead runner this time at third. And that makes one, two, four straight singles. Five hits total. 
and the bases are juiced. Surprised. I thought we'd see a meeting at the mound right now with Tucker Burgess. But I cannot believe Columbus State has come out as hot as they have. It is 2 nothing. But if North Greenville can get out of this without allowing any more runs, it'd be huge. Again, you have a force out at every at every bag, but there's only one out. Here's Gunnar Drennan, a second baseman for Columbus State. And now we're gonna Coot Langus, I believe, is gonna come out. That looks that looks like Coot Langus coming out from the third base dugout. He's gonna bring the infield around with him. Drennan last night, one for four with a single. But the way the way Columbus State has come out, five hits, all five singles, including the last four batters, and it doesn't seem to have an end in sight. I'll tell you what, Columbus State, you know, they they were able to hit the ball well last night, and they're playing like they have their hair on fire. I mean, they just are playing like this is an elimination game. I know it's just been one inning, but five hits in the top of the first is just something. It really is, and. Obviously, North Greenville hadn't had a chance to hit the ball yet, but they have lit Tucker Burgess up. Tucker Burgess is second-best ERA in the Conference Carolinas, too. Already giving up two runs. And another foul ball away. That was Tucker Burgess' 27th pitch. And he's got one out to show for all of his 27 pitches. Five hits, two runs. Might be a long day for uh, Kip Rawlings, Avery Greer, and uh, Brett Hurlong, Jared Lemke out there. He got Lavaglio. Out. Might be a long day for those guys. Uh, Burgess looking at out, out number two here. He's got Drennan behind 0-2. Ahead in the count, so has a pitch to waste here. Needs to be careful. Just take your time with the pitch. There's the 0-2. Miss it up high. No chase offered from Drennan. Trying to get on the chase with a junk pitch. He can still throw about, well, he can still throw one more if he'd like to. 1-2 count now. Burgess draws set. Got a 1-2. Near to Drennan, and he'll fire it right back to Burgess. They hold the runner at third. They'll fire over and turn. They turn two. That is big. I mean, that's really big because Burgess grabbed it in his glove, turned around, threw it to third. The, the runner on third was kind of clueless, and you feel like when looking at the scoreboard, five hits, and the way that inning went, you would kind of feel like it's more than 2 0 -oh. So to get out of that inning, only being down two, that's kind of – uh, uh, a heartwarming thing to, to think about because they, that one big hit this game could have been ugly. I mean, I'm telling you. Yeah, Columbus State sends seven to the plate. Drennan finally lines out back to Burgess, and he ends up doubling up far at third. So after it's said and done here in the top of the first, two runs on five hits, no errors for Columbus State, two left on for the Cougars. We head to the bottom of the first, and here's the batting order. For North Greenville, Josh Black, the DH, will lead things off. Richard Sr. out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Utah Jones out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, playing at shortstop. He'll bat second. John Jones, number 32, catcher. He'll bat third. Connor Grant bats fourth. Jeffrey Chandler, who broke a school record with nine RBIs against Anderson, he'll bat fifth. Ryan Brown bats sixth. Out of Memphis, Tennessee. The first baseman, Andrew Plunkett. Jared Williams bats eighth. Jack Morris, the center fielder, rounding out the batting order. And to the mound for Columbus State, you're looking at Perez Knowles, a lefty Whew. senior. Absolutely. Pitched a, a good bit this year. A 3.77 ERA, 6-3 win-loss record, 15 appearances. Only one of those, Gray, he did not start. Um, he has pitched 93 innings exactly, given up 83 hits, 50 runs, 39 of those earned, 41 base on balls, struck out 106, and his opponent's batting average is 232. Pretty good pitcher. Yeah, 106 strikeouts, and the opponent's batting average in the 
low 200s. That's going to be something to watch out. But, of course, North Greenville has done a pretty good job of getting solid hits off uh, good pitchers, especially in the Conference Carolinas. At one point, King University had two of the top five in strikeouts, I believe it, believe it was, and North Greenville swept the series from them. They won every conference series and only dropped one series all year, and it was their last regular season series against Nova Southeastern. So let's see if the Crusaders can get those two runs back. We don't need five hits right now, but we would like to get those two runs if we can, any shape or form, however we can do it. Ball one issued to the red shirt senior. Transfer out of Furman U University. Mentioned he was from Charlotte, North Carolina. This is number eight, Josh Black. Robert Brooks tried to frame that one. Home plate umpire Patrick Lane did not buy it. He did, die, he did like that one, however. Strike one just above the knees. Josh Black, a senior, batting 333, 168 at-bats, 46 runs, 56 hits. Uh, he has had no home runs on the season, 36 RBIs. And he holds off strike two. He kind of worked. Josh Black worked his way into the lineup. He was initially not a starter, yeah. but the reason why Coach Powell has him in that leadoff spot. And still 16 of 17. On the base path. Good eye there, but uh, now brings it two and two. Josh Black, a guy who can hit the ball, but um, you're right, Gray. Hadn't had as many as the bats as some, as many as, you know, Connor Grant and those others, but still played a, a good majority of the season in the DH role. Knowles ready to fire. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Black goes down on strikes. Whew, that was a big, big pitch from Perez Knowles, and that is his 107th strikeout. He can strike some people out, man, I'm telling you. And here is the shortstop, number two, a junior from Stillwater, Oklahoma, the former Tar Heel out of the University of North Carolina, Utah Jones, hammers the first pitch down the first base side. This one hanging up there and right to the right fielder, Webb, and that's two away. Two quick outs, Columbus State doing the exact opposite of what North Greenfield did. Perez Knowles off to a good start, just a couple of pitches and two outs. One of those is a strikeout, and that brings up John Jones. And he, at catcher today for North Greenville, number 32, senior from Oviedo, Florida, at the University of South Carolina. Switch hitter. As you mentioned, a senior hits 391 coming into this game. 179 at bats, 70 hits on the season for John Jones. 14 doubles, 7 home runs, and 56 RBIs. He's second on the team in the less and the least amount of strikeouts with 18. Watch his ball two go by below the knees. 2-1 count to Jones. Big. Big South Carolina connection here at North Greenville. Coach Powell playing there during his college days and pulling in a lot of transfers from around the southeast. Transfers in the past couple of years from South Carolina, Coastal Carolina, Clemson, Tennessee. I mean, the list goes on. He's college Georgia, Charleston. College of Charleston. He's gotten plenty of transfers, and that's one of his recruiting tactics is recruiting those transfers who – Need some playing time, just like John Jones, who's done a good job so far, a great job this year Ooh, for the Crusaders. Good, good eye there from Jones to lay off ball three. It's been tough to lay off, I tell you. That brings the count to three and two. Full count to Jones. Got the payoff. Way upstairs, ball four. I mean, that was way upstairs. I mean, that was close to the third story. Yeah, close to hitting him in the, in the neck area. He had to really dodge that one. So North Greenville does have a base runner, even though there are two outs. Next up will be number six in right field today, Connor Grant. Coming into this game, Gray hitting 396, 182 at-bats, 72 hits, 13 doubles, 10 home runs on the season. He's tied for first and 55 RBIs. Him and Plunkett both have 10, 10 home runs. Junior from Columbia watches ball one go by downstairs. That is... Columbia, South Carolina, and there's transfer from the College of Charleston. There he is. 1-0 count. Connor Grant is the tying run for the Crusaders. Knowles looks over to first. To the plate. Good eye. Ball two. Really good eye. 
Looked like it was going to stay on the table, but it broke off just a little bit too soon. Keeps the count at, or moves the Kentley 2 and 0. How about the crowd here? Nice crowd. A little bit more than the 11 o'clock game, Gray. A lot of red. A lot of red. A lot of red, as you would expect. And uh, check over to John Jones. This 44-win season North Greenville has only the, the first time they've been able to get over 40 wins since 2010 when they won the NCCAA World Series. Call strike there. No swing from Connor Grant. Interesting. A little high and inside, I thought, but evidently Patrick Lane, the home plate umpire, liked it. Lindy Hall, first base umpire tonight. Andrew Tumlin, second base. Third base, Trevor Henson. 2-1 count to Grant. Trying to make Knowles do some work like Burgess had to do in the top half. The plate. Ball three. That's a good eye. That was a really good eye. Robert Brooks brought it up, tried to frame it, but that was a good call as well by Patrick Lane because it did not cross the plate as a strike. Let's see if we can get two on, Gray. Favorable count to Grant. And 3-1 offering. He'll lift it high Come to straightaway on. center. Drifting back is Kirkwood, and he'll make the grab. Right at the warning track. Uh, nice effort by Connor Grant, but like you said, Kirkwood and center field made it, and that will end the inning. Side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on for North Greenville through one. And Burgess, a bit of a rocky start. Let's see if he has things settled down as we make our way to the top of the second. Do up for Columbus State will be Kirkwood, the center fielder, Webb, the right fielder, and back to the top of the order for Barry, the shortstop. Columbus State leads North Greenville here early to nothing. The Southeast Regional on the North Greenville Sports Network. And a first pitch swing here over to third. Good charge and even better throw. He didn't get him again. Uh, you want to tell me that's a hit or an error? Kirkwood able to reach safely. As great charge by Ryan Brown. Pulls Plunkett off the bag. And another leadoff runner aboard for Columbus State. We're down to the right fielder. This is Drew Webb. Bats 271 for Columbus State. And he'll rock it one to oh left field. Word. Going back. And, yep, that's out. Holy cow. How about Columbus State just coming out of this thing and rocking it. And that's the bottom of the, the lineup. I mean, this... Drew Webb goes yard, and that is his seventh home run of the season. Columbus State up 4-0 over North Greenville. How about that? 
These Columbus State Cougars are rocking it. We all thought the team to beat was going to be Georgia, Georgia College. College and North Greenville, but all of a sudden, Columbus State just not looking back. It's going to be the fight of the lower seeds as here is the shortstop. We're back to the top of the order. Grant Berry, one for one today with a single back in the first and a run scored. And he'll rocket one foul down the third base side. Coming in, coming in to this inning, Tucker Burgess was already at 30 pitches. He threw 30 pitches in the first inning. So obviously, Columbus State, <laughs> I don't know if they've done their scouting report or what, but they're rocking Burgess. Burgess breaking ball, does not find the zone. Ball one. One, two. Low in the zone, right to first. Smothered by Plunkett. Flip to Burgess. He's safe. Doesn't get him. Oh, my word. Deja vu. I mean, that's the exact same thing that happened in the first inning. The exact same play. It was hit down the first baseline. And, man, Jared Williams tried to get there and just could not get it to Burgess in time. Don't look now. Columbus State's almost at 10 hits. Whew. Next up, the D.H. Oh Chase Brown goodness. as a pickoff attempt shoots by Plunkett. He's going to third. And there goes Barry over to third. Yes, sir, he does. And he is going to be safe. Columbus State, they are on fire. Tucker Burgess is rattled. Whew. Eight hits. Now an error. Yep, air against Burgess. But Burgess, uh, not going to be going too much longer, it doesn't look like, unless he can settle down soon. Just not a good start for the Crusaders. Two two innings, and only actually three outs, and, you know, it's already eight hits and four runs for Columbus State. Brown, the first out of the first inning with a ground out to short, and Burgess missing inside, ball one. Now North Greenville is a big multi-run team as this one right to right to plunk it at first and he hangs on to it, tags a bag. I was just waiting for something away. to go wrong. Give me two. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, all the things that have gone wrong so far, finally getting an out. Well, North Greenville can at least get Brown out, so that's one away. As here is Mason McClellan, one for one today with a single in the first and a run scored. You're going to be hearing that a lot as we work our way through the middle yeah. part of the order. One for one, one for one, one for one. Burgess fires. Jammed him up inside. Fouled away. Strike one. I don't know if it's just that the Columbus State seeing the fastball from Burgess so well or what, but eight hits and in, in two innings. That's just I haven't seen that many breaking balls from him either, and that was normally his go to. And the ones that the ones that I have seen either miss wide or just don't get called. Go after him again. There, strike two against McClellan. North Greenville last trip, last time they went to the Southeast Regional, they were the eight seed. Had to play the number one seed, Catawba. Lost that one by a run, four three. As ball one misses upside and got sent to the losers bracket. Had to play Wingate the following day in an elimination game and. That's when Doolittle almost got the perfect game against them, and North Greenville ended up dropping another low-scoring low affair to wing it and was two and done. Well, there's a one-two. Upstairs, two and two. That was in uh, Coach Powell's first year, the 14-15 season, when they won the conference tournament title up ending Mount Olive. First year winning the conference, pretty good. Pretty good start for Coach Powell, and obviously what he's done since then has been – Phenomenal in four years. Win totals increased every year. I don't know if it can keep going that way. Though. Yeah. I mean, how many more can you win than 44? I don't know. Only eight losses. Whew. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's an off-speed pitch. 
Yeah, you pepper him with fastballs and then slow it way down. And I mean, he slowed it way down. Uh, uh, McClellan goes down on strikes for Burgess's first strikeout. Maybe he's just now getting in his groove. Mm. <laughs> Here's Austin Farr, the left fielder. He singled last time up. Farr is so good. Has the ability to put it over the wall as well. 15 home runs on the season. And he golfed at it down low for strike one. That was also a little breaking ball there, like a curve ball or of some sorts. Burgess got him to chase. The 0-1. Goes upstairs and misses ball one. That, that, read, that last South East Regional North Greenville Inn uh, took place in Thomasville, North Carolina. And Catawba College electing to host it up there to Summer League Field as Far Rockets won foul down the first base side. That was a shot, too. He straightens that thing out. That's going to be trouble. Yeah, that was another long ball. A runner on third with two outs. Crusaders trying to get out of this without allowing any more runs. Two in both innings. Fires the offering. Little hopper over to Williams at second. Flip to first. And the side is retired. Plunkett makes a grab. Double deuce for Columbus State. Gray scoring two in the first and second. Let's see if we can change that. Two runs on three hits. No, one error. And one left on stranded at third. So we head to the bottom of the second, North Greenville trailing Columbus State 4-0. Jeffrey Chandler, Ryan Brown, Andrew Plunkett do up next for the Crusaders as they look to fire up the bats here in the Southeast Regional on the North Greenville Sports Network. Back here for the bottom of the second, Jeffrey Chandler leading off the bottom of the second for North Greenville. And Chandler has had a hot bat through the regular season, broke the school record with nine RBIs against Anderson. Got injured during the late, middle of the late spring, and he golfs one to deep short, recovers nicely, but he's safe. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and that finally is the first hit for North Greenville. Man. Uh, great job by the shortstop, Barry, to keep that one from rolling into the outfield, but Chandler beats out the throw. That was a very good stop at short. You're right, it was, but he just could not get the throw in time. So let's see if the Crusaders can mount together a big inning and tie this thing up. And now here is a third baseman, Ryan Brown, number three. He'll take a called strike. Brown, a senior from Columbia, South Carolina, transfer out of the University, or the College of Charleston. And Brown, or it's Connor Grant and John Jones that still have two of the top batting averages in the conference. At one point, John Jones was batting over 450. That's pretty good. Brown, a senior, hitting 321, 168 at bats, 54 hits, 14 doubles, 8 home runs, and 39 RBIs. He's only been struck out 15 times, best on the team. And Knowles not wanting to throw to the plate, continuing to pick on Chandler at first. Not a big threat to steal, 8 for 10. Does not try to do it a lot, was Ryan Brown. Throw the plate this time, and Brown fouls it away, strike two. Counts 0-2 now, no outs here in the bottom of the second. Nice weather, sun shining a little bit. Yeah, what happened? I mean, it looked absolutely dreadful during the first game. Yeah, and it's 
It's a little bit sunny. Partly, well, mostly cloudy, but still a little bit sunny. Nice crowd. And thankfully a breeze. No kidding. We can Here's just get the, some runs. We'll be okay. Yeah, the 0-2 offering. Ball one. That looked good. Mm. Looked really good. I thought that was a nice pitch from Knowles, and I think he did too. So he turned around a little bit frustrated, but first ball of the at-bat. We'll take it. Yeah, that's one of those uh, the 50-50 pitches. Brown just kind of, well, let it be called. Now the throw over to first. Pitch to the plate. Ooh. Swing and a miss, strike three. Brown ready for it and went, pulled the trigger early. I mean, a big, big swing from Ryan Brown. It really was. That's one away for North Greenville, and here comes number 22 at first base. Number 22. This is Andrew Plunkett, a senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. Transfer out of the University of Tennessee. Batting 291, 134 at bats, 39 hits. Eight doubles, ten home runs, 34 RBIs. Knowles going over to first to keep checking on Chandler. Knowles really has not lost anything. He's been very, very good in these first two innings. And misfires outside, ball one. Plunkett certainly had his moments this season. He sent a second game at Fleur Field against USC Aiken. He had a nice home run shot. Comes a 1-0. Called strike at the knees. No swing there. I like the uh, approach by Perez Knowles. Not the tallest guy in the world, six foot tall, but he really... Has controlled his pitches very well so far. Taking his time, too. Oh, the 1-1. One, one. Oh, man, big swing and no contact. Well, maybe a little bit. It was a foul tip. One and two. He just takes his time on the mound, Gray, and whenever he feels like he's ready, he releases, and that heat is hard to catch up to. I got to wonder, though, if we get toward the fifth and sixth inning, if he's still out there, how his if that's not going to wear his arm out. He's throwing it. He really is. And he likes checking on Chandler at first, too. He does. That's, that's, that's something you, you did need to point out, and that's a good point. Wants to keep that runner back. Don't There's a 1-2. Fouled away. And that one going and lands in the bullpen. And altogether, Knowles has gone over to first five times. This inning. This inning. Hmm. Well, that's total, too, because... It's, yeah. He tried once in the room. Here's a 1-2. Fouled away. Altogether six. Altogether he tried six. tried back in the first, but five this inning alone. I get it. You want to keep the guy pinned back, but. His pace is very slow. I mean, it's just it's methodical. I mean, it really has. It's something that he's probably not doing just this game, something he's done all season long. Yeah, North Greenville's got to start getting some hits off of him, maybe rattle him. There's number six this inning. And it's hard to, to hit a pitcher who's stuck in his rhythm like that, who's just so controlled and calm. Sometimes as a batter, you need to step out of the box and see if you can get him out of rhythm. Yeah, because then you, then you get frustrated and start rushing swings. Yeah. Like, well. Well, look, out in the, <laughs> look out in the VIP tent. That's where Plunkett sent that one. One and two. It's a hard shot over there. He's been late on the last couple. If he can guess right on the timing of the next one. I got the one-two. Fouled away. 
Well, you got to give Plunkett a lot of credit. I mean, staying alive, trying oh, to get yeah. uh, Knowles' batting average up. and Oh, excuse me, <laughs> batting average, yeah. pitch count up. <laughs> trying to get his batting average up. Yeah, that too. Knowles' pitch count up. Coming up to the eighth pitch here, and Knowles uh, really peppering the outside of the zone there on Plunkett. I'd like to see Plunkett turn on one. Just make him pay. He'll go downstairs, and Plunkett hangs off for a long-awaited ball, too. It's a good eye by Plunkett. It was way downstairs. Waiting on a 2 2. And upstairs, inside, three and two. It's a good eye as well. I good mean, job, Plunkett. Yeah, it's a very good job. That's the second time that Knowles has thrown that pitch high and inside up toward the neck area. Earlier he did uh, and walked a batter, but he's got to see if he can keep a good eye here and get on base, put two runners on. I think we're coming up to pitch number 11 in this at bat. Come on, Plunkett. This is a 10th, and Plunkett rockets there into you go. left field, back to the wall, and God! He made him pay. I thought if he could keep getting the pitch count up and that at bat, sooner or later, Knowles would make a mistake. And that's huge. That might be a break North Greenville needs because Knowles was in such a good rhythm. I mean, you can tell there wasn't nothing rattling him. And that's, that's really big right there. That's really, really big. Andrew Plunkett with the home run. Number 11 on the year. It is his 11th of the season. And guess what, Gray? He now leads the Crusaders with 11 home runs. He's no longer tied with Connor Grant. Base is now cleared for the second baseman, number one, Jared Williams, a junior out of Gilbert, South Carolina, transfer out of University of South Carolina at Lancaster. Williams hitting pretty good, 316 batting average coming into this game, 174 at bats, 35 runs. Williams will pop it up right side in foul territory and – did he hang on to that? He dropped it. He sure did. Yeah. Webb drops it. He sure did. That was a good effort, though. A really good effort by Drew Webb. Williams, 25 RBIs on the season, just one home run, 10 doubles, 55 total hits for Jared Williams. Strike one against him after the dropped out from Webb. Only one out so far, too. Let's see if we can keep this thing going. Yeah, one. Ball one. Also, great. another thing that we hadn't mentioned this inning, Crusaders taking as long as they can, staying on the field, gives Tucker Burgess, Burgess a much-needed break uh, in the bullpen. He'll send one right to second, bobbled, but throw to first is in time. There goes Williams away. Two down. Tucker Burgess can get just a little bit more rest and see if he can freshen up when he comes in. And Andrew Pluckett had, what, an 11-pitch at bat and ended with a home run? Yeah, that was big. It really was. Especially now that we'll go back in the top of the order next inning, and maybe this inning, and, and once these guys have seen Knowles twice, they may start to tee off on him a little bit better. Ball one missing downstairs to the center fielder, number seven, Jack Morris, a junior from Rutgersville, Virginia, out of Liberty University. Oh, ball two. That one sailed. I mean, that, that was something you did not see before that at bat with Plunkett that you did see after the at bat that I was talking about. That really changed. I mean, he, you can tell he's not exactly in the same pace as he was. That's really big. It looked like Knowles just lost the grip on it before he got to his release point. Yep. 2-0. Right down Main Street, strike one. Yeah, that's a very good pitch. And, it, and he's just, at this point, daring North Greenville to say, try and hit my fastball. Well, if they do, it's going to be a There There goes hit. another one. Popped up left field. Actually, this one going back and just short. I could tell it was going to be mm. just short as it was right at the fence in the warning track. But a good effort by Jack Morris trying to get his fourth home run of the season. Good thing is we'll have the top of the order back up. That is the case. Two runs on two hits for North Greenville. No errors. And nobody left on at the end of two. Well, they pull half of the lead back as we head to the top of the third. Columbus State has sent five or six, one, two, three, that's seven. Seven batters to the plate in the first. And then one, two, three, 
for six in the second. So let's see if Burgess can uh, whittle that number down some and get back to the bottom half of the frame. Do up for Columbus State, Brooks, Wager, and Drennan. When we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Back here for the top of the third, Columbus State leading the one seed North Greenville four to two, and first pitch into the catcher. This is Robert Brooks, and ball one. Brooks lasted bad. One for one with a single. How about <laughs> what else? Sounds familiar. Yeah, and he'll drive one to left center. Chandler calls for it. Looks, has it. Good out. Good way to start the inning. If the defense can help Tucker Burgess get a couple of outs, keep that pitch count down, and these next couple of innings, Tucker Burgess may be able to ride this thing for a little bit longer. Just see if we can have a low pitch count inning and get out without allowing any more runs. And here is Frank Wager. Hey, that's a big swing and a miss. All speed working right there. And Wager, one for one with a single. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> and Burgess missing inside somewhere. Ball one. One ball, one strike, one out, nobody on. A little cloudy, cloud cover, if you will, here in Tigerville. One one. Up high in the zone, and that one going to go foul. Strike two. <laughs> well, that one was a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> So one two count now. The one two. Called. Yes, called yep. strike yeah, three. That was yeah. a, a beautiful pitch by Tucker Burgess. He turned around. He knew it was a strike. <laughs> Took the umpire just a minute, uh, Patrick Lane, to call that one, but he did, and that's two outs. Second strikeout for Burgess. This will move us down to the second baseman. Gunner Drennan is 0 for 1 with a line out right back to Burgess, who then doubled up far in the First inning. And Burgess, strike one. Burgess looks to have his command a little bit more in this inning than he did in the first two. L1. Up high, ball one. And he's not slowing down a ton. I mean, he's still dealing pretty, pretty fast. Likes, he likes to work quick. There's a 1-1. One, one. Off the end of the bat foul. That's good. Ahead in the count now. One more strike will end the inning. Top half of the third, if you will. One, two. Offering swing and a miss. Strike three. How about that inning from Tucker Burgess? Gave up two runs in the first, two in the second. Come back in the third, and he just does work. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Down in order goes Columbus State. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the third. North Greenville due up with the top of the order. Josh Black, Utah Jones, and John Jones trailing Columbus State here in the 4v1 seed matchup on the North Greenville Sports Network.
Back here for the bottom of the third, North Greenville at the top of the order. Josh Black, Utah Jones, John Jones due up. Crusaders trailing it 4-2 after a four-run, well, a two-run, four-run score, two in the first, two in the second for Columbus State. That first inning seemed like it was never going to end. I'm telling you, it was kind of questioning in those first two innings, but Tucker Bird has really had a nice outing in the top of the third, and I like that zero sitting up on the top of the third inning as well on the scoreboard. looks nice. Ball one into Josh Black, who is 0 for 1 today, struck out swinging back in the first. Here's another opportunity, though, top of the order. Mm. That was low across the plate. Nice, Nicely framed. <laughs> Very nicely framed by Robert Brooks. Not saying it wasn't a strike, but good framing job. Oh, low pitch right to short. And over to first, that's in time. So Josh Black now 0 for 2. That'll bring up the shortstop, Utah Jones. He's 0 for 1 today. Flew out to right, Webb and right earlier, back in the first. So if we short, the shortstop can get something going for the Crusaders. Again, he was 361 coming into this game. Like Gray said, 0 for 1 now. And he'll watch ball one go by. In for, the turf. For a couple of weeks there, Utah Jones was pretty much double or nothing because either it was a double or nothing else. Not a bad problem to have. No. 15 doubles on the season for Utah Jones. Second on the team in doubles behind Jeffrey Chandler, who has 16. one -oh. 0 Called strike. There's a 1-1. One, one. High chopper foul to third. Strike two. We knew coming into this game, Gray, that both of these teams obviously were, were very highly touted, both 40-win baseball teams this season, and it's been a good game so far. Let's see if we can get some more offense from the Crusaders. 1-2. Driven to right center. Carrying on it, and right to Kirkwood for put two away. Yeah, Kirkwood didn't have to, to drift too far. He came over to left field or right field, if you will, his left, and made the play over toward Drew Webb. But that was a good effort by Utah Jones. Just could not get it over. And with the bases empty, that'll bring up the catcher, John Jones. He walked his last time up in the first. First offering from Knowles. Inside ball one. Yeah, very low on that one. It's a four to two game. If you're just tuning in, Columbus State played two runs in the first and second inning. And watch his ball two go by. Two low pitches. Duo. Oof, almost down to Anita. Just <laughs> golf. He was. That was a big swing and an even bigger miss. John Jones tried to put that one over the scoreboard. Could not do it. Brings the count to two and one. The king of the batting average for the longest time of, in the conference, and he'll watch ball three skip off the plate. Well, you mentioned John Jones took the base on balls last at bat and see if he can get on again. Just base runners is what we need here. A little two-out rally going. 3-1. Uh, curves in, strike two. That's a good pitch. Very good pitch. Perez Knowles, the senior for this Columbus State baseball team. There's a payoff, and it'll foul it off. Jones is chasing those down low in the zone. Now, that one would have been close and probably would have been called strike three, but that's twice now he's gone low. Trying to fight him off. I'd love for John Jones to connect and get his eighth home run of the season. Payoff again. Popped ah. him up. First base side. Get out. Get out, ball. And into the 
Columbus State dugout. That was close. I thought that was going to stay in the play. Brooks trying to reach out for it. Didn't have it. Good effort, though. Very good effort by Brooks at home. That's always um, when you get a foul pop-up and you're a catcher because you got to get out of your stance, rip off your mask, and then find the ball. Yeah. And that, that takes some time. There's the payoff once more. Right back up the middle to second. Fielded by Drennan. He'll turn and fire. Not in time. That ball bounced before it got to first base, and that is what allowed John Jones to reach safely. So Connor Grant represents the tying run for the Crusaders. Remember, Gray, he got it close to the wall last time. John Jones with the infield single, and that he did. Connor Grant 0 for 1 with a deep fly out the center. Yep, it was deep. To end the first. See if he can stretch that one a little bit farther this time, Gray. First offering to him. Swing and miss. He's trying to. <laughs> Strike one. That's a big swing from Grant. Came into this game with 72 hits on the season, leading the Crusaders in hits. John Jones is second with 70 hits, but Connor Grant is the hit leader. Eh, chases it down low. Strike two. I mean, that one went really, really low downstairs, and Grant tried to pull it up out of the dirt. But could not do it. Way behind in the count is Connor Grant. 0-2 oh with two, two outs. Offering on the way and hangs off ball one. Good eye on that one. Similar to the very last pitch, but the only difference was he did not chase that time. He tells John Jones to stay at first. Yeah, Grant not going to... Fall, not going to try to fall for that at least two times in a row. Well, he's still not in a favorable position here, one and two, and he'll send one to right, tr curling away from Webb, and he adjusts nicely and makes a grab. Two flyouts for him. One to center, one to right. That retires the side here for North Greenville. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on. It's still 4-2 in favor of Columbus State as we head to the top of the fourth and do up for the Cougars will be Kirkwood, Webb, and Barry when we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Here for the top of the fourth, Kirkwood will lead off the top of the fourth for Columbus State against Tucker Burgess, who settled in the past, at least the past inning for sure, getting the Cougars to go down in order. And he'll miss outside ball one. Kirkwood one for one today with a single in the second and a run scored. Check swing. And nothing coming from that except ball two. How about head coach Greg Appleton? We were told during the break that he's approaching 
900 wins in his career. Been here, I say here, been at Columbus State over 20 years, I believe. 21st season as head coach for Greg Appleton, closing in on 900 wins. What a career he's had. And if what I go by on the roster sheet, uh, the sheet that I read yesterday, Columbus State has made the postseason 26 times. So 21 of those, they've only missed the postseason five times in his 21 years. That's right, and won the uh, national championship in 2002, went to the World Series in 2004. South Atlantic Regional was as far as they went. They got bounced 0-2 in 2006. And uh, you're right, Greg, 10 appearances, 29 and 19 in the postseason. He has uh, really had a great career at at Columbus State. And Burgess just picked up strikeout number four against Kirkwood, getting him to chase downstairs. And here comes the right fielder, Drew Webb, who is one for one with a home run. That's a big pitch right there. That ball was really low, but evidently Drew Webb went across. And the home plate umpire said he went too far. And they'll send the slow roll to third. Here comes Brown, tries to barehand it and can't get it in time to plunk it. You could tell that was going to be trouble because that's, that you said slow roller. It was a really slow roller. Brown just tried to pick it up with his right hand because he got to it so late and could not get it to first in time. I, I don't know. Suddenly, where did the turf bounce go? It's like it just went away. Grant Barry in it. Yeah, about to the top of the order for Barry, the shortstop. He is two for two today, two singles. Man. On base percentage coming into this game was 376. Obviously, that has increased. That was a nice job of getting on. Takes ball one there from Burgess. Webb just getting on with the infield single. 64 hits on the season for the shortstop. And Burgess misfiring up high, 2-0. and out. Crusaders have tried earlier in the game to turn a double play. They were unsuccessful. This would be an opportune time to get out of the inning. Two zero, Driven deep center. Morris goes over for it. And finally comes down to him. And that is two away. Take a fly out as well. Jack Morris did a good job of getting underneath that. Didn't have to move too far and records the second out. So bring up Chase Brown. He is 0 for 2 today. He has been both of the first outs of the first and second inning. Chase Brown really has not had as many at-bats as everybody else on this lineup. Only 102 at-bats compared to guys like Grant Berry who had 207. Spin over to first. And Webb back. Good thing about Chase Brown is, even though he has only 102 at-bats this season, he gets on base 50% of the time. Burgess missing outside. One and out. Good pitch. There's a strike. No attempt from Chase Brown. Really good pitch. And there's a 1-1. One, one. Runner goes. Throw down to second, and he is out. Absolutely. What a great throw by John Jones. You could tell that he got it in time, got the throw up, and Utah Jones was there to make the tag to end the inning. That's two innings in a row. John Jones, excuse me, Tucker Burgess has not allowed any to score, so good job by the Crusaders there, and we'll see if we can get some more runs. No runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on after Webb picked off at second. So we'll head to the bottom of the fourth. North Greenville still trailing by two. Due up for the Crusaders, the heart of the, part of the heart of the order, Chandler, Brown, and then we're back to Plunkett when we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network.
And here for the bottom of the fourth, Jeffrey Chandler will lead things off for North Greenville. He's one for one today with a single and a run scored as part of Plunkett's home run. And missing high and outside, ball one from Knowles. Knowles and Burr just now pretty even on their uh, total pitches so far. And a slow roller over to second. And a flip to first, and Chandler's done. That was a very good job by the second baseman, Gunnar Drennan, the senior, to get over there in time and make the out. One quick out for Perez Knowles. Knowles at 60 pitches, trailing Burgess by 10. Let's see if we can give him 10 more here and hey, make him pitch more than 10, get him above Burgess. Ryan Brown next up. He's up for one day. Struck out swinging back in the second. And trying to look for the bunt and runs through it like softball. And ball one. Sixteen strikeouts for Ryan Brown this season. Let's hope it doesn't increase anymore. Trying to put that what? sliding bunt down. and That yeah, was kind of like a, a slap out. bunt, something you see in softball. The runner. Runs up and just slaps it down. Hadn't seen that in a while on the baseball field. One's all the way across now. 1-1 one, one in the turf. 2-1. and one. Offering on the way. Called strike two. Brown thought it was a little bit inside. Did not swing at that one. Evens the count. There's 2-2. Two, two. That one low and away. Ball three. That's a good eye. Making Knowles work for it. And now we have a full count. Crusaders trailing by two. Trying to get back in this ball game. Payoff on the way. That is ball four. Good eye, Brown. Very good eye. And... Ryan Brown will get on base. 41st base on ball. That's a lot of walks. Yeah, I tell you, Connor Grant and Ryan Brown have uh, been the dominant force in the heart of the <laughs> order, and Jeffrey Chandler right there in the fifth spot. That, uh, that just makes that a mean triple threat. Let's see if Plunkett can plunk this one over the wall, tie this thing up. One for one with a home run back in the second. And he'll take strike one. A little bit low for his liking. He watches it go by, as you said. Did not swing at that one. And here we go, over to first. Knowles likes to make sure his runner doesn't get a lead. Yeah. You got to make sure that, you know, he's not getting too far off the bag. The strategy of, of Perez Knowles. The 0 1, 0 and 2. <laughs> that was a low pitch and a big swing. One away here in the bottom of the fourth, the 0-2. We are waiting on. It's taking us time. There's one check to the plate. There's two checks to the plate. I was going to say, time's called. Plunkett needs to call time. Yeah. A batter should never stand Man. in the box that long. No. you got to get out. One stair over, okay. Two, all right. Knowles looks to be back in the same form he was earlier in the first and second inning when he was so slow and kept throwing back over. Kind of what he's doing now. Still waiting on the 0-2. Here it comes, and Plunkett fouls it away. Good job by Plunkett just to get it out of play and foul it off. And now both these starters are way up there in the count. This is coming up for number 70 for Knowles. Both at 70 after this pitch. 
after that after that first inning by Burgess, who would have thought that they'd be neck and neck in the pitch yeah, count? And 70 is a little high for where we are right now. It really is. Throw to first. I bet you he has 70 throwovers. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Let's go ahead and double it. I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, here comes the catcher out too. Robert Brooks coming out to talk. Freshman coming out to talk to the senior. And that meeting does not last long at all as Brooks is getting a sign right off with yes. Now an 0-2 count. And the 0-2. High and outside, ball one. That was 10 pickoff attempts. 10 pickoff attempts for Perez Knowles. Seems like more than that. Just, just the way he's so slow, I guess that's the reason. He just takes his time. And it's not a bad thing. It's just that's, he just takes his time on the mound. A one, two. Woo! Swing and a miss, strike three. Plunk it upset after that one. He chased and did not get what he was looking for on that one. This will bring up the second baseman, Jared Williams. 0 for 1 today. Ground out to second. We'll see if we can somehow. I mean, I know it would be a two-out rally now, but we've got a base runner on. Let's not waste an opportunity. Let's see if we can get him over and score. That's Ryan Brown on first. And Ryan Brown, Gray, he steals a lot. He leads the team. Yeah, this one might be – This all these throwers might be pretty warranted. Tw let's see. 22 yeah, 22 is 23. My goodness. Throw the plate looking for the bump. Uh -oh. Williams gets it down trouble. right in the dead zone. Flip the first. He's not in time. There goes Brown over Brown the, the third. third. That is awesome. That is a, a big, big mm -hmm. bunt. I mean, you're talking about perfectly placed, Greg. It couldn't have been any better than oh, that. Oh, man. And he, he went right after him down the first base side. And how about the effort from Ryan Brown to realize what was going on and just take off the third. This is a big opportunity here. And let's see if we can capitalize. Bring up the center fielder, Jack Morris. 0 for 1 today with a fly out to left. Very deep left. Jack Morris, two runners aboard. A big hit here. Could give the Crusaders a lead. I was wondering if we were going to see the yeah, infield bunt. Home run will give him the lead. And swinging for it and fouling off. Four to two is the score. Well, Morris has had his streaks during the season. 16 RBIs. Ooh. <laughs> Chases it down low. And, and that's one of the things that Perez Knowles has got a lot of the Crusaders to do so far today is chase that pitch curveball. It looks like it just dips right in underneath and the Crusaders have been swinging at it. I guess the way he, the way it releases it is it looks like it's either going to go middle or high and then it just breaks about three or four feet before it gets to the plate and drops to the turf. Have to keep an eye on where the catcher Brooks sets up as well, as there's a waste pitch outside ball one. Other than that home run from North Greenville, Perez Knowles has done a good job with his command. I mean, he hasn't lost anything at all. Well, yeah, only two base runners left on for NGU. We gotta get these around. Throw the plate. Chased it downstairs, and I'm going to tag him out. Two left on Gray. Not not the best thing in the world, but still a two-run game. Yeah, but North Greenville's got to stop chasing that that low ball that Knowles has him going after. It's got to be a curveball. Uh, we're, we're all the way on the outfield, and we don't have the best view, but it's just curving so much. They're chasing real low, like you said. No runs on one hit, one error. And two left on for NGU through four. Led to the top of the fifth. Columbus State still with the lead. Four to two. And do up with the Cougars. We'll have to finish the DH Chase Browns at bat. So it'll be Brown, McClellan, and Farr when we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network.
Well, we're approaching a halfway point here of this second game here on day two in North Greenville trailing Columbus State in this 1v4 matchup. Columbus State being the four seed and Tucker Burgess ready to deal to Brown, McClellan, and Farr. And strike one. Tucker Burgess has really had two good outings in the last two innings. Let's see if we can get another from him. The 0 1. There's that Burgess breaking ball. And that's two in a row. That's two really good looking strikes. Oh, and two the count. And no chase offered outside ball one. Comes a one two. And a two hopper right to Williams at second to Plunkett. And time is that would almost got over Plunkett. <laughs> it was a little high on the throw from Jared Williams, but like you said, Plunkett was able to reach up and grab it. One out. Good way to start the inning for the Crusaders. Here's a third baseman, McClellan, one for two. Singled back in the first, but then struck out swinging in the second. When you look at the North Greenville season, obviously, Gray, we know that a very successful year of 44-8. and eight. You look down their schedule, they had very good wins all season long. Uh, they were able to beat number three Belmont Abbey back on March 3rd, 9-5. to five. That was a big win. They were able to take down USC Aiken, number 15. USC Aiken at USC Aiken, 12-4. to four. And you look at the way they finished winning strong. I mean, they had a loss to Mount Olive on the like 7th of April, but they did not lose again until the 4th of May at Nova Southeastern. So a big, big stretch where they just won a lot of baseball games, and hopefully they can continue that this, this tournament. And the two biggest, arguably the two biggest series wins were against Belmont Abbey and Mount Olive. That yep. was going to be the uh, roughest conference competition, and they got the series wins over them as McClellan lifts one deep to left center, and Chandler going to stop at the warning track and make the grab. And they did lose one game to both of those teams, but like you said, they got the series win, and that's what matters. North Greenville won game one, five to four over Belmont Abbey, won game two, nine to five, lost game three, 12 to four, and then against Mount Olive, won game one, seven to three, won game two, three to two, and then lost game three, six to five. And here is Austin Farr. He'll swing at the first pitch, drive it over to Plunkett at first, drag race to the base, and Plunkett gets the out. Burgess gets them to go three up, three down again. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on for Columbus State. Well, we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway home here in this second game of day two. Due up for North Greenville, the top of the order. Josh Black, Utah Jones, and John Jones when we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Well, here we are in the bottom of the fifth, North Greenville, with Josh Black, Utah Jones, John Jones due up. And Josh Black 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a ground out. See if we can get the leadoff man aboard here for North Greenville. Looking for the bunt and takes a strike. 
see if the Crusaders can barrel down here, Gray, and get some offense going. Obviously, they got those two runs earlier, but they have yet to really get some consistent base runners on and threaten uh, Knowles and put some pressure on them. That's what you got to do. And Black's going to send one to hit. left Short, field. And Kirkwood going to go over for it, and that's actually far making the grab one away. North Greenville's putting the bat on a couple of good pitches, and that's about the third one, I believe, that went to the warning track, just unable to get that extra 10 feet. And we'll send it to the shortstop, Utah Jones. It's 0 for 2 today with a pair of flyouts, one to right, one to center. Let's see if he can put one in left, and this time put it over that scoreboard. He'll take ball one. Jones a righty. And right down the middle, strike one. One one. In the turf, that's ball two. Good eye so far from Jones. 2-1. He'll foul it off first base side. They fouled him off right, fouled him off, fouled the you know, third base line as well and popped him up. They just cannot put them where they're, you know, the old saying, put them where they're not, put them where they ain't. North Greenville hadn't done that so far. we got to get some base runners on. Yeah, unfortunately, there's been somebody in a blue shirt underneath the ball as that one right to first. And that's two away. Easy for Frank Wager. He just went to a knee and opened up his glove and ate that one. Two quick outs. And, well, John Jones has been able to extend the past couple of innings. He's come to that bat each with two outs. He walked in the first and singled in the third. And that's the bad thing. John Jones really isn't having an opportunity to come to the plate with runners on. Both times, like you said, he's come to the plate with two outs, no runners on, and he's walked. We've got to get some runners on toward the bottom part of that lineup or, you know, get Josh Black or Utah Jones on base and let John Jones do his work. And Knowles has got North Greenville going low as Jones almost swung underneath it. He fouled it off, and now he'll just take strike two. Uh, we've been raving about that curveball from Knowles. He's, he's got that one just about on cue whenever he needs it, and it's been very impressive. A little high heat that time for the strike. The 0-2. A high hopper to first, and that's going to do it. Three up, three down for North Greenville here through five. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We'll head to the top of the six, and Columbus State will have Brooks, Wager, and Drennan do up for the Cougars as they lead it, continue to lead it four to two here in the Southeast Regional on the North Greenville Sports Network. Here for the top of the six, we have Brooks, Wager, and Drennan due up. Brooks is one for two today, a single in the first, a fly out in the third. Great. Ever since those first two innings, this 
third, fourth, fifth inning has kind of went by quickly. And North Greenville, before you know it, it's going to be the ninth inning. We've got to start plating some runs, and that starts with getting base runners. Bishop fires strike one in, and he has – or Burgess has settled in nicely as he, he fires strike one. It's just if he can get some help from his bats on the other side. Third, fourth, fifth inning, zeros all the way across for Burgess. No runs. Behind here, 0 and 2 to Brooks. Offering up high, ball one. One, two. Called strike yes. three. Beautiful pitch by Tucker Burgess. That his fourth strike out of the day, Gray? Or am I wrong on that? Five. Five. Oh, that's good. Glad I was wrong on that one. Five strikeouts, and like you said, he settled in uh, quite nicely. Only four for Perez Knowles, the pitcher for Columbus State. So Burgess. Has one more strikeout, but Columbus State has two more runs, and that's what the Crusaders are trying to get back. Ball one into the first baseman, Frank Wager, and now over the top of strike two, or strike one. See Wager, one for two today, a single in the first, and struck out looking in the third. One, one. Ball two. There's a 2-1. And fouled off in the first base dugout. 2-2. Two and two. Burgess is just not really leaving those strikes sitting over the plate like he was in those first two innings. He has a lot more command on these pitches. And you can tell. How that. about that one? That's what I'm talking about. Right over the top of it on the slider. Two away. Here's the second baseman, Gunnar Drennan. 0 for 2 today, a line out to first and a strikeout swinging in the third. 87 strikeouts on the season now for Tucker Burgess. First offering, high and in, ball one. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. This is 90. Whew. Another big swing. A nice duster there from Burgess on number 90. And a foul off up high. That's strike two. Right behind the big canopy is up on the hill. The athletic staff's done a great job this week. Getting everything ready. A lot of work that people don't see that goes into it. Hosting a regional. And another strikeout for Burgess. He just struck out the side. A 7. 88 on the season. How about Tucker Burgess? And he got he went off speed there to get Drennan to go. And that's another 1-2-3 inning for North Greenville. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. Burgess strikes out the side. We'll send it to the bottom of the six. North Greenville's got to get the bats going, and the heart of the order due up. Connor Grant, Jeffrey Chandler, and Ryan Brown due up for North Greenville as, they, as the Crusaders trail it here in the Southeast Regional on the North Greenville Sports Network.
And here in the bottom of the six, North Greenville, Connor Grant, Jeffrey Chandler, Ryan Brown do up. Sounds Con like three runs to me, Gray. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> hope so. Connor Grant 0 for 2 today, though, with a pair of flyouts. Let's get Connor Grant going. He's had some deep flyouts. Good eye that first time. And if you're just tuning in, as you can see, Crusaders are trailing 4 to 2. Nine hits from Columbus State, only four for North Greenville. Here is the 1 0, make it 2 0. Tucker Burgess roughed up in the first two innings, allowing two in the first, two in the second. But since then, it's been three up, three down. That was a strike there. One ball, one strike. I thought that was below the knees. It was, but it was framed well. Well, that should be a strike too, but it's ball two. Sun shining down bright here at North Greenville. And here's a 2 1. And a high hopper over to short. And Grant is down. That's the thing about it, Gray. We've, we've had that home run that cut the lead in half, but North Greenville has yet to put any consistent pressure on Perez Knowles. He hadn't had runners in scoring positions. He hadn't had runners on second and third and, you know, with a low out. He, he just has been pitching well, and he's getting these first couple of runners out, and North Greenville just can't put pressure on him. And whenever North Greenville does get a base runner on, they have a hard time getting past first because Knowles just slows the game way down and keeps picking over to first. First pitch swing over to short. Good field by Barry. Throw to first, and that's Chandler done with. That was a very nice play by Grant Barry. A nice glove and a scoop to throw it over to first in time. And, man, this defense behind Perez Knowles has been phenomenal, but Perez Knowles just hadn't really lost anything. You know, I, I said that home run might help, but you've got to consistently put pressure on him. And ever since that home run back in the second, the Crusaders have put no pressure on him. We've got to get some base runners. Well, Ryan Brown, the last hope for the inning. And watch out, ball one high and inside. Ryan Brown is the six hole. Came into the game hitting 321. Walked his last time up in the fourth for that struck out swinging. Ooh. And ball two. Like a good pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We're two up. And strike one. Crusaders obviously still have seven, eight, nine to go to work, but you don't want to, especially in the postseason, you don't want to wait till the later part of the innings to try to come back. Got or swung at, driven over trouble. left side. That's going to drop foul. If it would have stayed fair, that would have been down, but you're right, it drifted foul. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Not only has Perez Knowles and Tucker Burgess settled in gray, the humidity has also settled in nice, quite nice. It's back, it's back. I mean, it is not the hottest day, but you know the humidity is here. Summertime's here. The 2-2, two -two, and he'll drive it to first, and Wager will walk it right to the bag. Three times that inning, we hit it right to the infield. <laughs> and it's a in-order inning for North Greenville. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Columbus State still leading 4-2. to two. Kirkwood, Webb, and Barry do up for the Cougars when we come back here on the North Greenville Sports Network.
Here for the top of the seventh. North Greenville running out of time. Only a few more innings to make up a couple of runs. They trail Columbus State 4-2. to two. And Kirkwood will lead off the inning for the Cougars here against Tucker Burgess. And Burgess missing a couple of feet short. Ball one. A little bit short on that one. You're right. Kirkwood a single and a strikeout today as time's at the plate. And nice swing and a miss. Strike one. Big pitch there. We saw Belmont Abbey come into the park a little bit ago. Yeah, they've got the last game today. It'll be Belmont Abbey and Lincoln Memorial. Should be a good one. Should be a really good one. Lincoln Memorial stunned Georgia College uh, yesterday, and Belmont Abbey obviously got past Wingate in that long game that was a walk-off home run. Had a check swing. We're going to appeal and no go. You can hear the Crusader fans not real happy about that. <laughs> yeah, here, here's some more than others. Three one count. Woo! Ball four. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I've seen that call to strike today. I really have. Well, Drew Webb, nobody out in the leadoff. Man, Kirkwood drawing a walk. That was Webb, two for two with a home run and a single. So one run, one runner is on for Columbus State. No outs this inning. Yeah, ball one, low and away. Good blocking behind the plate by John Jones. Yeah, Burgess doesn't like the signal. He's going to change his stuff up and we'll call time. And he gets a call strike out of it, one and one. On. Getting up in the pitch count here, Gray. Now, which starter is going to crack first as Burgess getting ready to tack on the triple digits. And both starters, like you said, are getting up there. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss, strike two. Well, Tucker Burgess, 100th pitch was as pretty as any of them. And I see some action going down toward the bullpen. I don't know if it's any legit <laughs> concerns. Yeah, I think it is. I think we're going to see some arms get loose. There's a 1-2. And a three hopper to Jones at short. Chance for two. Got second and didn't get ah, first. Couldn't get him. I thought he had him, but the ball fell out of the glove. And that was a close play as Andrew Plunkett just could not field it cleanly. But the good thing is you do get the lead runner and you get an out. Show four. Well, so send us back to the top of the order for the shortstop, Grant Berry, who is two for three today. A pair of singles with a run scored and a fly out his last time up on the fourth to center. Let's try again. We might can turn two on this next one. That's well, a hard one to do it, though. Now Burgess is going to try to pick off. Again, five hits on the day for Columbus. Excuse me, nine hits on the day for Columbus State. Four for the Crusaders. Yeah, but five of those hits coming in the first inning. That's right. And a fouled off. And the first base side, that is strike one to Barry. Cloud cover still moving right along. We've seen a nice little rain shower in the first game that gave us a delay, but the weather is just beautiful right now. We got one. Curve too much inside, ball one. One ball, one strike, one out for Burgess. Trying 
Trying to get the leadoff runner. 1-1 one, one, driven to left. Chandler going over for it. Now waiting for that one to come down the hill. Get it. That's two away. So bring up the DH Chase Brown 0 for 3 here in this game. A pair of ground outs, or all three ground outs. Brown just hasn't had the best of days and came into this game hitting the ball really well. 373 coming into the game and 102 at bats, 38 hits. Did have a home run in the game against UNC Pembroke, but other than that, not much else. Four total on the season for Brown. He'll take ball one. And a 1 0. And we get in there. <laughs> I thought that one was outside, but he liked it, so I'll take it. <laughs> Trying to see what the umpire wants to call the sun setting off to the west, and the batter now having to look almost directly into the sun just to see the pitch. As Brown drives it over to left center, Chandler again comes in, makes a grab. Absolutely fine job by Jeffrey Chandler to get some outs going and once again the defense plays well for North Greenville ever since that second inning they have done so let's see if the bats can get going no runs no hits no errors one left on for Columbus State through the top of the seventh time to stretch here at Ray and B Dillard Field we'll hit the bottom of the seventh coming up bottom of the order with Plunkett Jared Williams and Jack Morris due up for North Greenville coming up Crusaders trail it by two to Columbus State here on the North Greenville Sports Network And we're back here for the bottom of the seventh. Andrew Plunkett leads off the inning for North Greenville. One for two today with a homer and a strikeout. And behind here to Knowles with a first strike. And Paul one just not catching the top of the zone. It's just been a lot of flyouts and ground outs sure today has. for North Greenville. Especially for Andrew Plunkett. He'll hammer it, but foul. 1-2 count. North Greenville falls in this game. you got to play Georgia College tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. After their performance today against Wingate, 13-3. They looked hot today. They really did. There's your 100th pitch from Perez Knowles. So both Perez Knowles and Tucker Burgess over the century mark. Who will crack first? 2-2 a two -two outside, 3-2. and two. And not necessarily who will crack first. The story could be who will lose their stuff first. If you see one pitcher start throwing a lot of balls and loading the bases by giving the other team walks, that could be a, a good thing too. Let's just hope it happens to the Crusaders. There's full count. Ball nice. four up high. That's good. You know, that's, that's the first time we've seen Perez Knowles throw that many balls in an at-bat and not have the command that he's had because we talked about his location. Pinpoint accuracy has been just phenomenal all game long. And that right there is big. Let's see if the bottom of this is this is tough. We're going to have to rely on the bottom of the lineup. Not saying they can't do it, but Plunkett is on. Williams and Morris and Black. We'll see if we can get back to the top of the lineup. Jared Williams, next man up. He's one for two today, singled back in the fourth. Winner of this game gets a night game tomorrow night at 7 p.m. That's what we want. That is a ball. 
tried to frame it. I was going to be upset if he called that a strike. <laughs> and winner has to, or the loser has to turn around and play at 11. 56 hits on the season for Williams, including the one today. Yeah, we want the night game tomorrow. Yeah. Greg. Give us the night game. Here's a one out. Breaks <laughs> in, strike one. Just off the corner. You can hear the gallery behind home plate. Did <laughs> not like that one. Uh, you're, you're always going to have some comments from the peanut gallery. That was close, though. You've got to get some base runners and put the pressure on Perez Knowles. 1-1. One, one. Oh, that was that was so high. Ball two, or that was ball two, but instead it's strike two. Yeah, he reached for it, and that was a really, really high pitch. Jared Williams trying to go deep with a high heat, instead fouls it off. Williams can do it. He and Alex, Alex Williams both have good bats. And he golfed at it, missed it, strike three. That's the first out of the inning, so Jared Williams goes down swinging. One away here for Jack Morris, the center fielder. 0 for 2 with a fly out to left and a strikeout back in the fourth. Still a two-run game, but Jack Morris represents the tying run. There's that nasty curve. And Knowles is going back downstairs and gets Morris to go. I'm telling you. That is just a deadly pitch for Knowles today. Yeah, one. High and inside. That was very close to hitting Morris. The junior just turned and got away from it. <laughs> I'm pretty surprised Knowles hasn't thrown over to first yet. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> do not say that out loud. He will do it. To the plate. Good Down eye. Down low, ball two. Very good eye that time by Morris. That's we talked about. You mentioned it, Gray. The Crusaders today have chased more low pitches than we've That's, seen. That's, yes, you got to lay off that. Got to lay off. And I don't know. I don't know how to tell you to do it. You just got to. Have a quick reaction to not fire on it. He'll drive one go. to right field. That'll drop for a base hit. Plunkett heading to second. He'll have to stop there as the ball gets away from the second baseman, and Morris breaks through with a single. This is what I've been saying all game. Not one time have we put the pressure on Knowles with one out or no outs. Every time we've done it, it's been with two outs. Let's see if we can get the top of the order to get going now with two runners on. This is an opportune time for Josh Black. Josh Black will come to the plate. He is 0 for 3 today. A strikeout, ground out, and a fly out for him. Josh Black came into the game hitting 333. I don't know if you're the rest of the game in the next two innings if you're going to get an opportunity like this with two runners on, and you're going to see Greg Appleton make his way. I don't think they're going to pull him now. I don't think they'll pull Knowles now because they're just now sending – some bullpen relief out. Yeah, they got a one pitcher and two catchers going out. I'd like to see Noel stay on just a couple of more pitches because eventually he, he is going to wear down, and the Crusaders have one out and two runners on. This is just a big, big inning. I mean, this is this is one of those you can't let pass up. you get, you got to yeah, Black runs on. Black's just got to stay alive because then you got Utah Jones and John Jones. John Jones, a power hitter. And well, let me ask you this, Gray. Black so far on the day is what? What's 0 for 3. It? Okay, Jones, Utah Jones is what? He's 0 for 3. Okay, that's 0 for 6. John Jones is what? He does one, have a hit. He's 1 for 2. 1 for 2, so that's 1 for 8? 1 for 9? Mm. Not good. Top of the order has got to be starting hitting some baseballs. Let's see if we can get the top of the order going. Knowles is still in. And he'll fire to Black. Low and inside, ball 1. Good eye by Black, the senior. 170 at bats this season. Yeah, Black, the journeyman from Furman, he has been with this program for a long time. Here's a 1 0. Oh. Called strike at the knees. Man, they, I'm not saying he's, it's not a strike, but Robert Brooks, he is framing well, and I, I, you can't blame him. That's his job. But at some point, you got to question if that really is a strike going over the plate. It's about the fifth time that's happened. 
Well, Knowles now he'll look back to second. And the 1-1. Inside, 2-1. That's three straight pitches Josh Black has laid off. And the Crusaders lineup is probably starting to tell that Knowles is throwing more balls and strikes, and that's why they're laying off. Let's see if he can somehow find a good pitch and put the bat on the ball. You just got to be able to spot that that's right. sinker curve that he has. Oh, Lord, please don't remind us. There's a 2-1. Hammered ah. right to third. Chance for two. Got second. Hesitant on the throw. Not in time to first. Well, that's a good and a bad. I mean, obviously... That's one out, so that makes two outs. But the good thing is they did not turn the double play, which would have been a just a nail in the coffin this inning for North Greenville after plating or putting two runners on. So Crusaders still have uh, Crusaders have two runners on, corners covered, and John Jones to the plate. Or is that Utah? Yeah, this is Utah Jones. Utah Jones. Uh, Jack Morris, the unlucky out there at second, and U Utah Jones 0 for three today. Josh Black and Utah Jones both have 56 hits on the season. First offering to him. Good eye. Ball one. Now, if we could somehow get Utah Jones on and put John Jones to the plate with the bases loaded, that might be enough to crack Perez Knowles. I'd like to have John Jones at the plate with the bases used. I really would. Starting to see Coach Powell move around in the dugout trying to get his guys fired up as Knowles fires, and I didn't say, well, apparently that was a called strike. Two away here in the bottom of the seventh. North Greenville trying to get one back. 1-1, one, one, and uh, there's a throw over to first. <laughs> Wondering where that went. A 1-1. One, one. Low and away, ball two. 2-1 so count now, Gray. I think this is the hardest inning Knowles has had to work. It is, but this is i mean, this is the biggest inning of the game. I mean, this is a time where Crusaders have two runs on, two runners on the base path. You've got to see if you can somehow get them across. Here's the 2-1. Uh, golfer foul. Yeah, then you said golfer. You're right. That was really low. That's a sinker curve. He pulled it. 22nd pitch of the inning, we're being told, and that's a good way to, to break him, but so far he, <laughs> he, he yeah. hadn't allowed any runs. Well, Deuce is wild on the board. A 2-2. Two -two. Inside ball ooh. three. Oh, my goodness, what a close pitch. You heard the oohs and the ahs from the crowd as well. Jones might have sold that one a little bit, scooting out of the way of it. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yes. Like I said, when, it, when it comes to framing, you got to do what you got to do. Take what you can it. get. That was a big, big pitch. Well, full count, Gray. Two yeah, outs. Here we go. Going to be a payoff to Utah. Line through the yeah. gap into left field. One run will score. They send another over to third. Throws high, not in time. And the RBI single from Utah Jones has North Greenville within one. There you go. That's what you need. They stole at the right time, too. That way he was able to round second and go to third. Corner still covered with two outs, and that brings up John Jones. So both Jones will get a chance. Two outs, corners covered. Utah did his job. Let's see if John can do his. And is there a decision that will be made on Knowles before they, before Jones digs in, or will they let him deal to John? Well, here comes John Jones. One for two today, a walk, a single, and a ground out to first. First and third here for North Greenville, bottom of the seventh, two away. Knowles will deal, and mm. way inside, ball one. Almost hit John Jones. one -oh now to John Jones. Connor Grant waiting on deck. Offering. Low and away, ball two. There you go. And you, we've talked about Allen gave us the pitch count this inning a minute ago, but this inning he has thrown more balls than he's thrown all game. I mean, you can tell he's lost a little bit. Now, he's still, I mean, he's still 
controlling fine because Perez Knowles is that good of a pitcher, but he's throwing more balls. 2-0, 3-0. Framing didn't work that time. It was really low, and, and he brought it up. Did Robert Brooks just didn't buy it, and this is big. 3-0 count as you'll see the first baseman come over and talk to him. Only one base open. Frank Wager goes and talks to the senior. Junior talking to a senior there. Perez Knowles. Man, how big is it? How big of a game is this? First time since the second inning, North Greenville managed to score. I mean, this is just a monstrous game. Here's the offering. Ball four. John Jones will take his base. The duck pond is full, and there's nowhere else to put any runners. One run scores again. This thing's tied up. And Connor Grant, the junior, came into this game hitting 396 with 10 home runs on the season, Gray. He is to the plate. Uh, he's been right behind John Jones in the batting average in the, in the conference. And, in fact, right now he's second. John Jones is behind him in third. Well, they're going to keep Knowles in there to go up against Grant. See if he gives one that Grant likes. Grant's 0 for 3 today. Fly out, two flyouts and a ground out. And did he hang off of it? I think he did. I think he did too, but boy, it was close. Uh, no, oh, he, he did not. I thought he hung, I thought he held it up. Now well, the sack fly don't do you any good here, two away. No one count. Here's the offer. Lifts it Go high ball. to left field. Back Short. to the wall. Still going. And it is right to the center fielder, Kirkwood. Oh, my goodness. That ball was at the warning track with two outs and the bases juiced. And you could tell it kept hanging up and just not enough to get over that wall. And somehow Columbus State still leads. What a great job pitching from Perez Knowles. One run on two hits, no errors. Three left on for North Greenville through seven. Heading to the top of the eight, see if North Greenville can keep things level. McClellan, Farr, and Brooks do up for the Cougars. Now a one-run lead, four to three over North Greenville here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Here for the top of the eighth, North Greenville had the chance, and they got one back and left them loaded on the deep flyout from Connor Grant. It's 4-3 as we head to the top of the eighth. Tucker Burgess still out there, 100-plus pitches for him, well over 100 for Perez Knowles, sitting at 127 right now. As McClellan will lead off the inning for the Cougars, he is one for three, and he'll hack the first pitch, foul it off his foot. That hurts. That is absolutely painful. That is not a friendly feeling. So 0-1 uh, count, and the Crusaders are trailing by just one run. Nine total hits for Columbus State, six for North Greenville. And uh, great Crusaders only have two more chances to go to work. And 4-3 right now. Same score they lost to the one seed, Catawba College, three years ago in North Carolina. That is big hack and a miss there for strike two. Now the 0-2, 
And a high chopper to deep short. Utah Jones on the throw, on the money. Woo. And Plunkett hangs on to it. I what a way. It was a tough throw, but an even better job by Plunkett to hang on to it like you said, Gray, and, and make sure they did not drop it. That's a long throw over from short. Uh, man, that was, that was even short. That was shallow left. Yeah. Now here's Austin Farr. He's one for three. After that single in the first, two ground outs. And a called strike there. There's AL1. Doesn't offer up high. One and one. One one. Outside. Two and one. Offering on the way for the 2-1. Pulls it right to first. Plunkett has it. And that's two away. Plunkett's done a really good job at first all day long. And that was another nice play. That's two in a row this inning from Plunkett. Big time plays. And let's see if we can get one more. Frank Brooks, the, or Robert Brooks, the catcher. He's one for three. All those players that for uh, Columbus State that got a single in the first, apart from the shortstop, Barry, all the other players that got a single have gone 0 for since. I was going to say, is there anybody that has more than two hits an individual? I mean, uh, Barry has a pair of singles. McClellan's gone 0 for since the first. Farr has gone 0 for since the, since, since the first. Here we are at Brooks, and Wager hadn't gotten anything. That's a pretty pitch. There's strike two. Now Bird is going right after him. Columbus State, yeah, they, they haven't picked up a hit since the fourth inning and very few base runners since then as Jones deep short again will go for the long throw and plunk it in and out of his glove as Brooks will reach base safely beating out the throw and that will get credited as a hit, first hit for Columbus State since the fourth. And Frank Wigger will come in. One for three today. One for three is Wager, and there's a runner on with two outs. Burgess and company need one. Offering. Strike one. Comes the L1. Oh, beautiful breaking ball. Strike two. Birds is still still dealing. Uh, we talked about it. He struggled in the beginning innings of this game, but since those first two innings, he has really rocked and rolled and still going pretty good. The O2. And ball one. I was hoping for the call uh, strike, but just a little bit outside. <laughs> You and everybody in the first four rows. Yeah, no kidding. There's a one-two. Strike, strike three. Chased it down in the turf. Burgess is still dealing, but the only problem is the Crusaders are still trailing by one, four to three. No runs on one hit, no errors. One left on here for Columbus State. Bottom of the eighth. Coming up, North Greenville lead, trailing by one, and they will have Chandler, Brown, and Plunkett do up in the bottom of the eighth here in the Southeast Regional. Winner moves on to play the night game Saturday. Loser has to play Georgia College tomorrow at 11 right here on the North Greenville Sports Network.
Jeffrey Chandler will lead off the bottom of the eighth for North Greenville. Brown and Plunkett also do up. Chandler today one for three with a single and a run scored. And see if anything can be done with Perez Knowles as he fires strike one into Chandler. Somebody's going to have to just go out there on the mound and get him off. I mean, yeah. just drag him off the mound. I mean, he is just still on and still pitching good. That was a very good first pitch strike. Both starters out there, and both have gone over 120 now. Yeah. Right past Chandler for strike two. What, man, he went slow with the first pitch and then sped it up big time there, and he could not catch up. Could Chandler. <laughs> that was a lot of heat. Knowles has just been so good. And Chandler will hang on, foul it off, stay alive. Chandler Garnett grabbing several uh, regular season awards, including the National College Baseball Writers Association Player of the Week back in March. 0-2 count. Got to stay alive here. And oh. he chased the slider curve. Once again, he chases the curveball. And how many times have we said that? That curveball for Perez Knowles has just been something else. One away for Ryan Brown here was 0 for 2. He walked to get on base. His only time today back in the fourth. Fifty-four hits on the season for Brown. It takes ball one high and inside. And bottom line is one swing, one swing can change this whole game it around. Could. Eight home runs on the season for Brown, and that's one of now now something we're looking for is. Crusaders are just struggling to get base runners, and when they did last inning, they couldn't get but one. They had the bases loaded and could not convert, so like you said, Gray, one big swing could change it. And Brown peppered inside, but well, it takes strike one there. He kind of leaned out on that pitch and thought it was a little bit too far inside, but Patrick Lane, the home plate umpire, did not. There's 2-1. Same pitch. Inside, and that's ball three. That's the, that was the exact same location. Yeah. 3-1 count, one out. Ryan Brown trying to get something going for North Greenville. 3-1, and he'll pop it up foul. And that one's off the tent. <laughs> I wasn't sure, if that, wasn't sure if I was going to see that one come down. So a full count, one out. Bottom of the eighth. Columbus State just needs five more outs to end this game. And popped up to shallow left. There goes a shortstop. Barry back for it. And that's two away. Chances for the Crusaders are becoming less and less likely as the outs keep piling up. Only one more to end the inning and only four away for Columbus State from ending the ball game. Andrew Plunkett to the plate now. Ten home runs on the season. He's had one today. Yeah, Plunkett one for two, a home run, strikeout, and a walk. If Two runs scored today for him. If Plunkett could somehow do it again. He takes strike one. We have one. Went for it, fouled it off, strike two. O2 count. Plunkett knows the situation. Stepping out of the batter's box knows that Columbus State four outs away from getting the win in the first game for North Greenville in this tournament. He'll offer and Plunkett lays off ball one. 140, 140 pitches for Perez Knowles. I mean, oh my boy. goodness. 140. A one, two. <laughs> Strike three. His 141st was as good as any of them. It's just unbelievable. 141 pitches, and Perez Knowles hasn't lost a thing. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. Through eight, we head to the ninth. Columbus State will have the bottom of the order with Drennan, Kirkwood, and Webb do up as it's a one-run game, four to three, here on the North Greenville Sports Network.
Well, Tucker Burgess, his day is done. Kanan Cropper will come in to pitch the top of the ninth. So Burgess will finish with eight innings pitched, gave up ten hits, four runs. All four of those were earned, but hasn't let any runs in since the second inning. All four of those runs came in the first and second. Walked one, struck out eight, only gave up one home run, and will finish the day with 121 pitches. So we'll turn our attention to Kanan Cropper, who is might be the best arm out of the bullpen for Coach Powell. Cropper has got a great selection. He's got a very strong fastball, and Cropper's numbers, uh, he's very strong this year too. Hi, right, Gray. You gave you have given me uh, several trivia questions throughout the, the day and the, throughout the weekend. I have one for you. Oh boy, this is a two option question. You get one. Mm. You get one pitcher. Do you choose Ethan Elliott or Perez Knowles? I don't. Uh, well, it seems like Noel certainly has the uh, durability going 140, was but it? What, didn't Ethan Elliott go 130, something like that? Yeah, it was something crazy, and he got a bunch of strikeouts piled up, so too. So, we have seen just – and it's, it's expected when you get I'd have to take I'd have to take Elliott because the coach told you that um, – coach for Georgia College told yeah. you that he knocked them out last year. That's right. And he – and I, I, obviously he's going to be a pro one day, but those we have seen some really good performances by a lot of good pitchers. Well, here's Cropper. He'll have to face off against Drennan, Kirkwood, and Webb. Drennan is 0 for 3 with a line out and a pair of strikeouts. Cropper with a 3.06 ERA, 5 wins, 1 loss. And it's right by him for strike 1. Cropper blew that one right by him. Feel the breeze out here. Man, the big pitch. Cropper's walked 10, struck out 54. And a fair ball right down the third base That's line. Trouble. Extra bases here for Drennan. And he will have the double. Man. That's the first hit in quite some time for Columbus State. He's going to bring up the center fielder, Garrett Kirkwood. He's one for two today, a single in the second, strike out the fourth, and a walk in the seventh. So no outs to show for for Cropper and a run on for Columbus State. And gets the bunt down the third base side. They will try and go to first and no. don't get him. Man, that was a close call, but I thought he had the throw in plenty of time. I really did. But evidently he did not, and now the corners are covered. And the Crusaders' problem was they just needed one run, and now all of a sudden the problem is you've got two runners on with no out. Yeah, it's going to be a matter of preventing, preventing the runs and – you still got to get a hit off Knowles. Well, it's not good news for Cropper because here comes Landon Powell. Yeah, that's not a good not a good sign when Powell comes out of the dugout. First time we've seen him come out to the mound tonight. I'd like to be a fly on the wall yeah. in this conversation. Or maybe not. Might get swatted and smushed. Now Webb's going to be up to bat. He is two for th or he is two for three, a home run and a single, then reached on a fielder's choice. And we're back to the top of the order for Barry. Umpire, come out to break up the party and look. The coach passed. He's still out there. Umpire is trying to break this little party up, and it's not happening. And they're finally going to break up. So whatever was discussed, let's hope it works. No outs. Runners on first and third for Columbus State. They lead by one. They're sitting pretty. Two on, no outs. Here comes Webb.
Cropper to the plate. And he went. That's strike one. Crusaders trying not to lose their home game today. This will be the first time they have lost at home in 48 days. Yeah, the only only other loss here on the home turf was a game loss against Mount Olive in that doubleheader on Saturday. That was on April 7th, five to six, six to five rather. Swing and a miss for strike two. Cropper taking his time on the mound. But yeah, you're right. They lost to Ed Erskine back in March at Belmont Abbey and at Newberry and back uh, early on in February to Lander, but Crusaders don't lose at home often. That they're trying to prevent doing it today. No two. Goes Big after swing. it downstairs. Strike three. There's your first out of the inning. And the Crusaders finally get one to show for, and they still trail by one, but one runner's in scoring position for Columbus State, one on first as well. That's gonna take that's gonna take turn two or strike out the side. Bad news is Grant Berry top of the orders up. And two for four today for Berry, a pair of singles, it's but pretty good day. Hasn't got a hit since the second. Let's see if Cropper can get him out or force him into a double. Runner, Runner goes. goes and they're gonna throw no throw. That's a, a great move and a great call by Coach Appleton to, to get that runner over to eliminate the, the threat of a double play, and he did that. Stolen base there for Kirkwood. So there goes your chance of getting a double play. One out. One out to Barry. Makes it 2 0. I thought that was a good pitch. So a 2 0 count with just one out. 4 to 3 is the score. And it looks like they're just going to try and walk them I after thought, this. I thought about that a minute ago. I was wondering if they would do that, and they're going to do it because I think it's good because he's several reasons. He's 2 for 4. And the second reason is you put Barry back on. And you've got a chance for a double play. And that was ball four on the intentional walk there. That's a no-brainer because you bring up Chase Brown, and obviously Chase Brown can hit the ball, but today he hadn't done that so well. 0 for 4, has grounded out three times and then flown out to left in the seventh. So bases loaded for Columbus State, one out. Brown at the plate. Let's see what Cropper will give him. The offering. Ball one. Well, don't have anywhere to put him. And the one out. Popped up, shallow left. Utah Jones going after it. Now here comes Chandler. He'll make the grab. Runner will tag up, but no advance. Two away. That's good. That was a, a shallow hit ball, and that allowed the defense to get there and did not tag up from third, so two outs. This would be huge if North Greenville could get out of this inning. The base is juiced and not allow one of those runs to cross home plate. Going to have to deal with Mason McClellan. He has won for four, a single all the way back in the first inning. Since then, a strikeout, a flyout, and a ground out. Crusaders need more than just one thing. They need to get out of this inning, but they also need to get some runs in the bottom of the ninth. It'll be the very last chance. And Cropper dusts him for strike one. Right down the middle goes Cropper. Cleveland trying to get something going. Well, Cropper, the junior out of Salisbury, Maryland. Now 
And time's called as Cropper will lob it up. Let's try here for the 0-1. Cropper will offer. And miss it downstairs, ball one. 1-1 one, one count, two outs. Again, bases are juiced. North Greenville will take any kind of out they can get, whether it be a pop-up, fly out, strike out, anything. Grounder, they will take it. 1-1. One, one. And a chopper foul, one and two. Well, here's your opportunity. Just need one more strike. Cannon Cropper came in and loaded the bases, and if he can get out of it, it would be big. Hope the bats are, I hope the Crusaders have got the bats warming up in the dugout down there, leaving out in the sun maybe. Mm. See if they can get them warmed up for the bottom of the ninth. Here comes the one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. How about Cropper retiring the side and Gray? I'm going to start walking because i got to get some interviews with the coaches when they're done, but bring yeah. us home, would you? Yeah, make sure you get the rally cap going, too. I will. I sure will. No runs on two hits, no errors, and three left on for Columbus State. Well, it's go time now for North Greenville, bottom of the ninth, one-run game. Columbus State leads it 4-3, and Jared Williams, Jack Morris, and Josh Black do up for the Crusaders when we come back for the final half inning of regulation here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Bottom of the ninth here for North Greenville here in the second game of the Southeast Regional here on day two. North Greenville trailing Columbus State by a run, four to three. Jared Williams, Jack Morris, Josh Black, the order due up. See if North Greenville can advance in the winner's bracket. And per Perez Knowles, to no surprise, still firing in strikes. 141, that was 142 in his pitch count. Here's the 0-1. Downstairs, 1-1. One and one. One, one. Home run swing makes no contact. Strike two. One, two. And Williams is down on strikes. That's a six, seven, eighth strikeout for Knowles. And here is Jack Morris, one for three today. A single his last time up in the seventh. Knowles fires. Strike one. Oh, actually, Columbus State does have somebody warming in the bullpen as Morris stares at strike two. O2. Chased it, strike three. Morris has sat down on three straight. And so it's down to Josh Black. 
who is 0 for 4 today, reached on a fielder's choice his last time up from the leadoff spot. Now well, here it comes. We'll strike one. And Knowles rocking number 150. Miss ball one. There's a 1-1. One, one. Black into right field, and that gets down for a base hit. That'll roll to the fence. Here comes Black around first to second. Slides in safe. And there may be a glimmer of hope yet. Black with the double. We'll turn it over to the shortstop, Utah Jones, who now becomes the last hope for North Greenville. Jones won for four after flying out and then lining out. Got a single his last time up in the seventh. Jones the righty, he'll dig in. Black on second. Not much room for air here with two away. Time's called. Perez Knowles has had the golden arm today for Columbus State. He'll offer Utah. Strike one. Every batter he has faced has gotten strike one. Here in the ninth inning. Yeah, one. Popped up right side. Trailing foul and oh, it's caught. Columbus State has upset North Greenville four to three. No runs on one hit, no errors, and North Greenville's going to leave the tying run stranded at second in Josh Black. And final score here, 4-3 to three, Columbus State drops North Greenville to the loser's bracket, so that means NGU is going to play an elimination game against Georgia College, a team that they... Lost to in the second game of the season, 7 nothing, And that's going to be a fairly quick turnaround. They will play at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Columbus State advances to the 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. And they will get the winner of our next game between Lincoln Memorial and Belmont Abbey. That game coming up slated for a 7 p.m. first pitch. Looks like we will be on time for that. So, here's your line score from this one. Columbus State rocked Tucker Burgess early. Two runs in the first, two in the second. And that would complete their scoring as they get four runs on 12 hits, one error. North Greenville got two in the second, one in the seventh. No more after that. They will finish with three runs on seven hits, one error. And we'll start first with the losing team. We'll start with North Greenville as Perez Knowles picks up his Seventh win of the season. Tucker Burgess will pick up his third loss. As that is where the pitching matchup goes. So Josh Black will go one for five with that double he just picked up. Utah Jones goes one for five with an RBI. John Jones one for two. Jeffrey Chandler one for four with a run scored. Andrew Plunkett the best day. He'll go one for three with a home run. Two runs scored and two RBIs. Jared Williams goes one for four with a hit. And Jack Morris, one for four with a hit. Mentioned Burgess charged with the loss. Perez Knowles picks up the win. And now over to Columbus State. Grant Berry goes two for four with a run scored. Mason McClellan, one for five with an RBI and a run scored. Austin Farr goes one for four. Robert Brooks, two for four with an RBI. Frank Wager, one for four. Gunnar Drennan, one for four. Eric Kirkwood, two for three with a run scored. Drew Webb, he'll go two for four with two RBIs. 
and a run scored. Perez Knowles picks up chart or he'll pick up his seventh win. 153. No, that is not a typo. That is the correct pitch count for Perez Knowles as he goes. A complete game. Allowed seven hits, three three earned runs, walked four, struck out nine, and only two extra base hits allowed. And we'll give him the player of the game awards because you're just not supposed to go 153. But that's what he does and helps shut down North Greenville. And Columbus State advances on in the southeast regional, so... Watch out for the Cougars. They seem to be an unstoppable force after downing UNC Pembroke 8-2 and then North Greenville 4-3. Next game coming up, it will be our nightcap for Day 2. Lincoln Memorial after upending Georgia College. Belmont Abbey closed out Wingate yesterday. They will go at it here in just under an hour for the right to play. Columbus State, good luck. That coming up next right here on the North Greenville Sports Network. 